Hi friends, welcome to all. In this video, we are going to see the packet tracer activity skills integration challenge. Friends, before coming to the packet tracer activity, if you like to get my future uploading video info into our mail, you can subscribe this channel right now. Well, coming back to packet tracer activity, here we can see our addressing table. Also, here we can see a background scenario in the skills integration challenge. The XYZ corporation uses a combination of eBGP, PPP, and GRE WAN connections. Other technologies include DHCP, default routing, ISPF for IPv4, and SSH configurations. Also, we will go through the requirements. Note the user exit password is Cisco and the privileged exit password is class. Right, we noted that. Interface addressing. Configure interface addressing as needed on appropriate devices. Use the topology table to implement addressing on routers, remote, HQ, and to branch. And configure PC1 and PC3 to use DHCP. We will start with the router a branch. Here we can see that. Coming to our addressing table, uh, here, is our, here is the device branch. And here we can see the interfaces so serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 and the gigabit ethernet 0 slash 0 and here we can see its address and submit to mask we will set this address in this branch enable configure terminal before that we will check the interface status show ip interface brief and here we can see uh, all the interfaces uh, that means uh, gigabit ethernet 0 slash 0 and serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 uh, are uh, down also we can see ip address not set so we will set the ip address for these interfaces first of all we will come to the interface uh, gigabit ethernet 0 slash 0 and we will set the ip address as per our addressing table 192.168.10.1 and the submit to mask 255.255.255.0 and we will give no shut command now we will go to the next interface here uh, interface uh, serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 and we will set the IP address here is the address I copy that address and the submit to mask 255.255.255.252 we will give an OSHA command right coming to the router branch here we can see both the interfaces are up now also we will check the IP address details show IP interface brief and here we can see that serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 and here we can see the address also gigabit ethernet 0 slash 0 right now we will come to the router HQ Coming to our addressing table, here we can see the device HQ and its interfaces serial 0 slash 0 slash 0, gigabit ethernet 0 slash 0. Also, here we, we can see the interface tunnel 10, and here we can see the IP address and the submit to mask. Here we can see those interfaces. Coming to the configuration in this router HQ, enable. We will give the command show IP interface brief and here we can see all the interfaces are down. So uh, we are going to uh, configure the record interfaces here. First of all we will go to interface uh, tunnel. The number is uh, 10. Tunnel interface number is 10. Here we can see tunnel interface 10 change the state to up. Now we will set the IP address as per our addressing table 10.1.1.2 and the submit to mask 255.255.255.252. Now we will come to the next interface gigabit ethernet 0 slash 0 and we will set the IP address 192.168.30.1. And the submit to mask 255.255.255.0. No shut command. Now we will go to the serial interface. 
interface so serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 and we will set the ip address i copied the copied the address from our addressing table and we have to give the submit to mask 255.255.255.252 also we will give no shut command now we will uh, go to the next router uh, remote here we can see that coming to our addressing table here we can see the details the interface are serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 g 0 slash 0 and tunnel 10 here we can see the ip address and the subnet to mask coming to the router uh, remote cli enable configure terminal before that we will check show ip interface brief and here we can see the record interfaces are down and ip address are also not set configure terminal first of all we will go to the interface uh, channel 10 and we will set the ip address 10.1.1.1 and the submit mask 255.255.255 252 coming to the next interface a gigabit ethernet 0 slash 0 ip address 192.168.20.1 and the submit mask 255.255.255.0 no shut command coming to our serial interface 0 slash 0 slash 0 IP address so here is the address I copied from the addressing table and the submit to mask 255.255.255.252 no shut command right yes we configured IP addressing for uh, these uh, routers uh, as specified now we will uh, configure PC1 and PC3 to use a uh, DHCP right coming to our topology here we can see uh, the device uh, PC1 coming to desktop uh, configure IP configuration here we are going to give instead of static here we are going to give DHCP here we can see it's requesting for IP address but we didn't get the IP address because we have to set the uh, DHCP server right so we will come to PC2 I think it's PC3 right so we will come to PC3 the desktop IP configuration and we are going to give it DHCP coming to the next SSH configure HQ to use SSH for remote access set the uh, modulus 22048 the domain name is cisco.com the username is admin and the password is uh, uh, secure access only SSH should be allowed on the VTY lines. Modify the SSH defaults version 2, 60 second timeout, 2 retries. Now we will configure this SSH in this router HQ. Right, so we will exit from here and we are going to set the IP domain name as specified cisco.com and here we are going to give the username as admin and password secure access and now we will give a crypto key generate RSA here we have to give how many bits in the modulus the specified it's 2048 now we are going to give IP SSH version 2 also, we are going to set IP SSH authentication retries. Here we can see number of authentication retries uh, as per our uh, packet tracer activity instruction. It's two. Also, IP SSH timeout 60 seconds. Now we will go to the line VTY 0 to 4 transport input ssh coming to the next configuration ppp 
configure the WAN link from branch to ISP3 router using PPP encapsulation and CHAP authentication. Create a user ISP-3 with the password of Cisco. Configure the WAN link from HQ to the ISP2 router using PPP encapsulation and CHAP authentication. Create a user ISP-2 with the password of Cisco. Coming to the topology, here we can see uh, we are going to configure PPP encapsulation uh, from this uh, branch router uh, to this uh, uh, router ISP3. Here uh, for this router branch, we are going to configure PPP authentication uh, for the one link serial 0 slash 0 slash 0. Coming to branch CLI. Enable configure terminal. We have to go to that interface serial 0 slash 0 slash 0. And here we are going to give encapsulation as a PPP. Also, we have to give PPP authentication. PPP authentication as specified CHAP. Also, we are going to set the username ISP-3 password Cisco. Now we will come to the router HQ and here we can see we are going to configure PPP uh, for this uh, WAN link serial 0 slash 0 slash 0. Coming to HQ, configure terminal, we have to go to the interface serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 and we are going to give encapsulation as PPP. PPP authentication as CHAP. Also, we will set a username ISP-2 password Cisco. Coming to the next configuration, a DHCP. On branch, configure a DHCP pool uh, for the branch LAN using the following requirements. Exclude the first five IP addresses in the range. The case sensitive pool name is LAN. Include the DNS server attached to the HQ LAN as part of the DHCP configuration. Then configure PC1 to use DHCP. So first of all, we will configure this DHCP in this router branch. Before coming to uh, this DHCP configuration, uh, here we can see our router branch. Uh, we are going to check the DNS server address. So we must set that. Here we can see that DNS server address 192.168.30.250. Also, we have to give a default router address. So that is the IP address of this interface, a gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0 in this router branch. We can see that address. It's 192.168.10.1. And here we can see the network address 192.168.10.0. And uh, prefix length is slash 24. Well, coming to uh, the HCP configuration uh, in this router branch. So here we are going to exclude DHCP address. Five, first five IP address we are going to exclude 192.168.10.1. Then we have to give a high IP address 192.168.10.5. Till 5 we are going to exclude. So 1, 2, 5. So we get 5 address. Now we will go to, we will uh, set pool name as LAN. Now we will give the network 192.168.10.0 and the network mask 255.255.255.0. Also we have to give a default router 192.168.10.0. One, this is correct, and we will set the DNS server. We have seen that address 192.168.30.250. Now we will come to our PC and we will verify the IP address coming to PC1 IP configuration 
and in the beginning itself we given uh, the option DHCP for this uh, device PC1 and here we can see the IP address 192.168.10.6 and we already given the uh, excluded list from 10.1 to 10.5 so here it's assigned 10.6 also here we can see the submit to mask default gateway and the dns server now we will move to the router hq configure a dhcp pool for the hq lan using the following requirements exclude the first 10 ip addresses in the range the case sensitive pool name is a LAN. Include the DNS server attached to the HQ LAN as part of the DHCP configuration. Configure PC3 to use a DHCP. Before coming to the configuration in this uh, router HQ, here we can see our DNS server uh, IP address. Also, here we can see uh, the network address 192.168.30.0 uh, with the prefix length slash 24. Also, here we have to set the default router address that will be the IP address of this interface a gigabit ethernet 0 slash 0 in this router HQ. Here we can see that address 192.168.30.1. Now we will come to the configuration HQ. Enable configure terminal. Here we are going to give IP DHCP. Excluded address 192.168.30.1 and the high address. So we have to exclude a 10 address 192.168.30.10. We will give IP DHCP pool LAN. Here the network address is 192.168.30.0 and the submit to mask 255.255.255.0 coming to default router 192.168.30.1 also we have to set the DNS server address 192.168.30.250 right now we will come to our device pc3 and we will verify the ip address coming to ip configuration and here we can see we already given dhcp and here we can see the ip address it's assigned 30.11 submit to mask default gateway and dns server Coming to the next configuration, a default routing. Configure a remote router with the default route to the ISP1 router. Use the next hop IP as an argument. Coming to the topology, here we can see our router a remote. Here we are going to set the default route uh, with the next hop address. Uh, so the next hop address will be the IP address of this uh, interface serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 in this uh, router ISP1. Coming to our addressing table, here we can see that ISP1 serial 0 slash 0 slash 0. The address is 209.165.201.1. So we are going to set this default route in this router remote. Coming to the router remote, CLI. Enable configure terminal IP root 0 .0 0.0.0.0 space 0 .0 0.0.0.0. Then we have to give the forwarding router's address. Here is that. I copy it from the addressing table. Coming to the next configuration eBGP routing. Configure branch with the eBGP routing. Configure branch to pair with the ISP3. Add branches internal network to BGP. Configure H HQ with the eBGP routing. Configure HQ to pair with the ISP-2. Add HQ's internal networks to BGP. Coming to our topology, first of all, we will do it in the router branch. Uh, here we can see uh, the branch network autonomous system number is a 65010. Also, we have to set the neighbor uh, address that will be the address of this interface serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 in this router ISP3. Here we can see that address uh, 209.165.201.21. 
also here we can see uh, the autonomous uh, system uh, number uh, 65535 coming to the configuration in this router branch enable configure terminal router bgp now we have to give autonomous system number 65010 now we have to set the neighbor neighbor address so here is that i copied from the addressing table also we have to set a remote uh, as specify a bgp neighbor that's 65535 also we have to give the network 192.168.10.0 mask 255.255.255.0 coming to the topology uh, now we have to configure uh, this uh, bgp uh, in this router hq uh, before coming to the configuration uh, here we can see uh, the autonomous system number uh, 65020 also we have to set the neighbor address uh, here we can see that the address of this uh, interface serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 in this router isp2 here we can see that address 209.165.201.17 also here we can see uh, this autonomous system number 65535 coming to the configuration the router hq enable configure terminal router bgp 65020 is the autonomous number then we have to set the neighbor here is the address i copied from the addressing table remote autonomous system 65535 now we will give the network 192.168.30.0 and to the network mask we have to give a mask then the network mask 255.255.255.0 coming to the next configuration uh, GRE tunneling configure remote router with a tunnel interface to send IP traffic over GRE to HQ Configure tunnel 10 with appropriate addressing information. Configure the tunnel source with the local exit interface. Configure the tunnel destination with the appropriate endpoint IP address. Also, we have to configure in the router HQ with a tunnel interface to send IP traffic over GRE to remote. Configure tunnel 10 with appropriate addressing information. Configure the tunnel source with the local exit interface. Configure the tunnel destination with the appropriate endpoint IP address. Coming to the topology, first of all, we will uh, do it in the router uh, remote. Uh, here we can see that. Uh, before coming to the configuration, we have to identify the tunnel destination. So here uh, we are going to uh, give this uh, GRE over uh, HQ. So obviously the tunnel destination will be the IP address of this interface, so serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 in this router HQ. So here we can see that address 209.165.201.18 also the tunnel source will be serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 coming to the configuration in this router remote enable configure terminal we have to go to the interface tunnel 10 and here we are going to give a tunnel mode as a gre and over ip and we have to give a tunnel destination here is the address i copied from the addressing table also we have to give a tunnel source serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 and we have to give no shut command now we will come to the router hq so here the tunnel destination will be the ip address of this interface uh, serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 in this router or remote here we can see that in our addressing table it's 209.165.201.2 also here the tunnel source is serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 
coming to the configuration in this router HQ configure terminal we have to go to the interface uh, tunnel 10 and here we have to give tunnel destination here is the address I copy it from the addressing table right and we have to set the tunnel source serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 and we have to give an OSHA command coming to the next configuration OSP of routing because the remote LAN should have connectivity to the HQ LAN configure OSP of across the GRE tunnel configure OSP of a process 100 on the remote router a remote should advertise the LAN network via OSP of remote should be configured to form an adjacency with the HQ over the GRE tunnel disable OSP of updates on the appropriate interface right so first we will do this on this router remote coming to the topology for this uh, router remote here we can see the network uh, this GRE tunnel 10.1.1.0 network with the prefix slash 30 also here we can see the other network 192.168.20.0 with the prefix slash 24 also, we will uh, disable OSPF updates for this interface Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0 in this router remote. Coming to the configuration in this router remote. Configure terminal router OSPF process ID as specified 100. We have to give the network address 192.168.20.0 and we have to give the wildcard bits it 0 .0 0.0.0.255 and the area 0. Also we got one more network GRE tunnel network that is a 10.1.1.0 and wildcard bits 0 0.0.0.3 area 0. Also, we have to set the passive interface uh, gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0. Next is uh, because the HQ LAN uh, should have connectivity to the remote LAN, configure OSP of across the GRE tunnel. Configure OSP of process 100 on the HQ router. HQ should advertise the LAN network via OSP of. HQ should be configured to form an adjacency with a remote over the GRE tunnel. Disable OSP of updates on appropriate interfaces. Coming to the topology, here is the router HQ and here we can see the networks 192.168.30.0. Also, here we can see the GRE tunnel network 10.1.1.0. And we should disable OSPF updates for this interface Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0 in this router HQ. Coming to the configuration in this router HQ. Configure terminal router OSPF process ID 100. We have to give the networks 192.168.30.0. And the wildcard bits 0.0.0.255 and the area 0. Coming to the next network 10.1.1.0 and the wildcard bits 0 0.0.0.3 area 0. Also, we have to set a passive interface a gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0. Coming to the last requirement connectivity. A verify full connectivity from PC2 to the DNS server and verify full connectivity from PC1 to the DNS server. Right here we can see our DNS server address 192.168.30.250. So we will try from a PC2. Here is that. Here we can see we are not getting the replay. Also, we will try from PC1, ping 192.168.30.250, here we can see the destination host unreachable. But according to our packet tracer activity, here we can see the completion status is 100%. 
also here we can see uh, in, uh, in this uh, pica tracer activity topology the access of uh, other uh, devices like isp1 or isp2 uh, configure is locked we unable to configure these devices well anyway uh, we configured uh, uh, this pica tracer activity as per the instructions and to this packet tracer activity meant for uh, uh, recalling the concept like EBGP, PPP, uh, then a GRE tunnel, uh, also DHCP, default routing, etc. So please don't worry about the connectivity uh, in this packet tracer activity. Uh, friends, if you have any doubt in this packet tracer activity, please comment below. Also, if you like my video, give a thumb and once more, if you like to get my future video info into our mail, you can subscribe the channel right now. Thank you.